Hey guys, how's it going and welcome back to my channel. I am super excited because today we got bigger news about Classic WoW than we have in a really long time. Way bigger than the, the most recent post that we've been getting. So the plan for this video is we're going to read over the post here together and then we're going to look at how it is going to be implemented into the new phasing and the good side and bad side about this update. Okay, so let's read the blue post. Since we broke down the six phases of content that will be rolling out for Classic, we've heard the increase in requests for PvP details, so we wanted to get you up to speed on our plans there. As was the case when World of Warcraft originally launched in 2004, there won't be any formal PvP system in WoW Classic at the outset. You'll still be able to PvP, of course, and there will be no dishonorable kills, so you'll be free to repeatedly hunt down the same player and NPC in, say, Stranglethorn Vale, or to your heart's content. That'll change once Phase 2 rolls out. Around, the, around we add the Honor System, which will introduce honorable kills, dishonorable kills, and PvP rank rewards. The items you earn from P the PvP rank rewards will be the versions from Patch 1.12. Keep in mind, though, just as it did originally, it will require a substantial amount of time investment to rank up through the honor system. For those interested in the rank rewards, earning epic gear will require dedication over a long period of time as a top contributor on your realm. We don't expect to see many people running around with these items early on, but we're certain Hillsbrad Foothills will see its fair share of action. That'll change once Phase 2 rolls around and we add the Honor System, which will introduce Honorable Kills, Dishonorable Kills, and PvP Rank Rewards. The, uh, the items you earn from the PvP Rank Rewards will be the versions from Patch 1.12. Keep in mind, though, just as it did originally, it will require a substantial amount of time investment to rank up through the honor system. For those interested in the rank rewards, earning epic gear will consist of dedication over a long period of time as a top contributor on your realm. We don't expect to see many people running around with these items early on, but we're certain Hillsbred Foothills will see its fair share of action. In the third phase, we'll introduce the first battlegrounds, Alteric Valley and Warsong Gulch alongside with their associated vendors. One thing to note is that there will be a couple of updates to these vendors over the course of the original patch release. Some items won't be available right away. For example, the spell penetration trinkets available from the Warsung Gulch vendor weren't introduced until patch 1.9, so we're currently thinking of adding these in Phase 5. The Arathi Basin Battleground will follow in Phase 4 alongside with its specific vendor. It'll be interesting to see how many people stay behind to guard the flag. Finally, in Phase 6, we'll have the World PvP Objectives in Silithus and Eastern Plaguelands, which will come out at the same time as Naxxramas. Here's what the PvP content looks like mapped out in the phases you recently read about. Alright, so let's see. Phase 1, Classic Launch. You can PvP one another in the world, but there's no honor tracking and no formal rewards for doing so. In Phase 2... We finally get the honorable system, including honorable, honorable kills and dishonorable kills, and PvP rank rewards the items and trinkets and stuff you get from getting rank 4, rank 5, rank 6, mount, and so on. Phase 3 is when Alteric Valley and Warsong Gulch is going to be added. Phase 4 is Arathi Basin, and Phase 6 is the World PvP and Silithus and Eastern Plaguelands. So if we look up here, we can actually see how the PvP is going to be implemented with the rest of the content. Now, let's talk about what's good about this post and what is very, very, very bad about this post. So there's no real problems in Phase 1. In Phase 1, there's no benefits for PvPing, no ranks, no nothing like that. So if people are PvPing, it's just because they're bored and they want to PvP, which is not that big of a deal. The problem occurs in Phase 2, the first problem. The first problem is that they're releasing rank rewards and honorable kills along with dishonorable kills before they start implementing Battlegrounds. Now, we all know that private servers are not going to be the exact same as Classic. However, people have started evolving their mindsets on private servers as they're practicing for Classic WoW. And they found out that the best honor that you can get per hour isn't going to have one huge, long, drawn-out fight in Hillsbrad Foothills or wherever. 
Th those might be fun to have an all-out war, but for the people who are trying to get bracket one in PvP and rank up as fast as humanly possible so that they can get the rank rewards sooner than everyone else, they're not going to be PvPing just for the fun of it. They're not going to be going to Hillsbrad and having a war for fun because it's not that much honor per hour. What they're going to be doing is camping the flight paths of all the high-level zones. That way they can snipe low-geared, high-level players that are still finishing off those last few levels, like level 56, 57, and so on. Or high-level areas that are close to Black Rock Mountain because they know that fresh level 60s are going to be trying to go to BRD, UBRS, Lower Black Rock Spire, anything like that. So places like Winter Spring, places like Searing Gorge, places like Burning Steps, They'll have the high-end rankers sitting there on every single flight path waiting for those people who are trying to do quests or enter Black Rock Mountain or, or farm or high-level herbs or anything like that. They'll be waiting for all of those people to get the maximum amount of honor per hour so that they can PvP the most efficient way possible. Now, I'd like to talk about a big problem that comes in in phase two but isn't necessarily specifically a phase two problem and that's the rank 14 weapons now i'd like to talk about the second problem which in my opinion is the bigger problem because the griefing that we talked about previously is going to go away over time as soon as they uh, release battlegrounds there'll be less griefing going on in each flight path however the next problem comes in at phase two but isn't necessarily just a phase two problem. And that's the ranking gear having the 1.12 stats as shown here in the blue post. The problem with this is how good this PVP gear is. I don't believe that having the level 60 blue sets of armor is too big of a deal. These blue sets will be used by casters and several other classes for a period of time, but isn't as huge of an impact as the rank 14 items are. Not only are the rank 14 items going to have their 1.12 stat weights, which rank 14 weapons get buffed earlier on and usually have smaller stat weights, but this also means that there's going to be the healing mace. There's also going to be the spell blade. There's also going to be the quick blade. So not only are the items going to have their updated stats and be better than how they normally would be at that time, but you're also getting improved weapons that completely negate any piece of raid loot. For example, let's look at the Spellblade. The Spellblade is a caster weapon that is best in slot till Naxxramas. Normally, the weapon that is best in slot before Naxxramas for casters is Sharpened solic Solicid Femur. And the rank 14 Spellblade has the same stats as Sharpened Solicid Femur. This means that if you can get the rank 14 weapon, let's say in Blackwing Lair, that's going to be the best weapon you can possibly have until Nax Ramis. And not only is it the best, but it is the best by a long shot. This means that all the other pieces of gear like Shadow Flame Staff, Mage Blade, and so on, are not going to mean as much to guilds that are going very hardcore, people who are willing to get to rank 14. It completely negates your desire to seek these weapons out. And the same can be said for the healer weapon as well. The healer weapon has better stats than Lakamir, the mace off of Nefarian. It also has better stats than a very, very hard dagger to get that is in the quest chain towards unlocking the Ankaraj gates. Actually, it has just slightly worse stats than the mace that you can even get off of C'Thun, which is an amazing mace and a coveted mace for most healers. Lastly, of course, is the melee weapons. The melee weapons, they usually just have the main sword and the main axe that is 2.9 speed. And these weapons usually start out with smaller stats than they will have now in Classic with the 1.12 stats. But not only that, not only will they have better stats, but melee will be able to have the quick blade, the offhand, which is slightly better than having two 2.9 speed weapons. One of the big issues I have with this is, normally in Vanilla WoW, 
your character hits level 60 and slowly gains power. There isn't a huge power spike where you get a certain piece of gear and you're just a monster. Even if you are one of the few people who are willing to get rank 14, there usually is no spell blade in at the beginning of the game. There is usually no quick blade, there is usually no healing weapon, and the one weapon that is in the game that people use, the 2.9 speed axe or sword, has nerf stats. But now, if people are willing to get rank 14, they are massively stronger than the average player next to them. Incredibly stronger. Not all is bad about this update, though. I think the blue PvP gear coming in in Phase 2 and people probably getting most of their pieces around Phase 3 is fine. You know, getting good pieces of blue gear around Blackwing Lair ZG patch is totally acceptable. Also, adding the vendors from the battlegrounds the way they are, I think is also very stable and, and balanced. I don't think there's anything really wrong with that. You get bracers from Warsong Gulch, which you're going to be able to get upon release, that aren't necessarily overpowered. You can get shoulders, which aren't necessarily overpowered from Arathi Basin, and they come in at a reasonable time. There's a weapon from Arathi Basin for casters that won't be extremely overpowered or anything like that. I think... How the battlegrounds are put in is totally acceptable. The only thing I'd complain about with how the battlegrounds are putting in is that the honor system isn't going to be put in at the exact same time. Lastly, in phase 6, I think the world PvP is implemented at a correct time as well. When Naxxramas comes out, there will still be people in Silithus trying to get grind reputation for their Rock Fury Bracers or their Earth Strike, and there's still going to be raids in Silithus going to Encourage. So implementing PvP at that time I think is totally acceptable, and also the Scourge Invasion and PvP events in, in Eastern Plaguelands are acceptable since people are going to start being in Eastern Plaguelands more often since Naxxramas is out. It's good that they didn't put those out too early, and putting them in Phase 6 I think is the correct choice. Regardless of the good sides and bad sides of this update, it shows us that the developers are really listening. And if the bad sides are really a, that huge of a deal for a lot of people, uh, I know it's a big deal for me specifically, then make sure you vocalize your opinion. That way we can make Vanilla WoW the best player experience we possibly can without ruining it. And remember guys, keep the classic WoW hype alive! Mm -hmm.